that it is actually through the Department of Energy, Dr. Stephen Chu and his science advisor, uh, Dr. Kunin, that they are running the emergency response in Japan. They're telling TEPCO what to do. And when one of the contamination maps was hacked by a Japanese uh, friend of mine, he discovered that the map was the same on the underneath layer, but instead of having joint release by Japanese and U.S. government, it said map uh, made by the Department of Energy. Right, so, so the U.S. Is, is basically calling the shots yes. as to but, Fukushima, and the U.S. Department of Energy, as we know from the BP oil spill, is essentially run by the British Crown and the City of London. Well, let's just take it to Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Dr. Dr. Stephen Chu received a Nobel Prize uh, for his research on alternative energy, solar energy. And um, he was at Stanford then. Two years before Obama was elected, um, he received $500 million from the Crown, which is the City of London Bankers for the Queen, uh, to start his election campaign. Uh, Stephen uh, Chu was hired two years before um, uh, Obama was elected by the Lawrence Berkeley Lab, which is where the Manhattan Project started, and it is um, um, managed by UC Berkeley. Uh, Stephen Chu, while director of the Lawrence Berkeley Lab, received $500 million from British Petroleum, which is owned by Queen Elizabeth, to set up a uh, British Petroleum that is called the Helios Research Project, or Research Village, uh, at the Lawrence Berkeley Lab. And so he was very beholden to British Petroleum and Queen Elizabeth. And his twin, he called him, at that time, while he was director, was British Petroleum scientist Steve, um, Dr. Coonan. And as soon as Obama was elected president, um, he immediately appointed Stephen Chu to be director of the Department of Energy, and Stephen Chu immediately appointed Dr. Coonan as uh, one of his uh, undersecretaries, or his, yeah, undersecretaries for science. And so it's the two of them who actually oversaw the British Petroleum Gulf disaster, we know what happened there, it was a big cover-up, and they let the poisoning go on and on and on. And they are also overseeing the Fukushima disaster, and um, obviously they're both British Petroleum, um, and uh, Chu is even a Nobel Prize uh, kind of an agent. Uh, the, the Wallenberg bankers in Scandinavia run the Nobel Prizes. We know it's a dirty prize. Yeah, so and, both um, Obama and Chu are Nobel Prize recipients. Yeah. Yes, yes. So all three of them, Obama, Dr. Stephen Chu, and Dr. Coonan, are all working for Queen Elizabeth directly. Right. There's, there's no doubt. It's, it's just how it is. Now, what I did want to say before... Um, we go on to evidence of U.S. and Canadian government complicity, is that um, there is a very strong, uh, very subtle, and very immediate radiation effect uh, in terms of the birth-sex ratios. In other words, the number of newborn baby boys born uh, for every 100 baby girls. And as soon as there is radiation contamination, the uh, number of new baby boys begins to drop. And in Fallujah, it has dropped uh, in the five years since Fallujah, the battle. It has dropped from maybe um, about 105 baby boys per 100, 100 girls, that's the world average, to about 87. And that happened very quickly, within two years of uh, the Fallujah battle. So we're seeing all over the world a decline in the ratio of baby boys to baby girls. And in fact, 
the Center of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation made a film, a documentary on the disappearing males, the little disappearing boy male children in Canada. And that's reported all over uh, the United States and other countries along with a uh, big decline in fertility, very large decline in fertility. Also, um, a new uh, article published, uh, let's see, on June 24th in the Daily Mail in England is that uh, one in five preschool children in the United States are overweight or obese. And there was an alarming article in uh, a Chinese paper that a toddler, two years old, weighed 131 pounds. His mother couldn't even pick him up. He weighed more than she did. Amazing. So this is what they're doing. They're turning the global population of babies and children into the seven dwarfs at, at Disneyland. They are mutilating the future of all populations. And, and they're this mutilating is part, the DNA. Yeah, this is part of the nuclear uh, depopulation plan. So as you say, within yes. a couple of uh, generations, uh, we will be down to the 1 billion or the 500 mi million that has been the plan of the British Crown, Dutch Crown, Rockefeller, Rothschild, uh, House of Rothschild. And not only that, they're culling populations as well. Um, I know that uh, certain, um, certain ethnic groups are targeted. I know that uh, people with mathematical abilities are being targeted. They're culling them. They're attacking them uh, from cell phone towers and other, other means and methods using HARP, using uh, CIA cancer. And in England, it's been reported that 150,000 people a year are being culled from the English population. These are people who have the ability, the, um, the creative thinking ability, the mathematical ability to reverse the technologies that have been developed by the international financiers and the monarchies in order to, um, to cripple the human population and reduce it to a slave population that they can easily control. And uh, there's no doubt about this. Um, I'm just going to talk about the government complicity now in the U.S. and Canada. Now, um, on March the 9th, there was a foreshadowing event of this Fukushima disaster, and that was that the Center for Disease Control in the United States suddenly posted a lot of documents on radiation and, and continued to for the next 30 days. Hundreds of documents. Now, I'm going to just read and, the titles and, and, of a And this is, just to remind people, this is suddenly out of nowhere, two days prior to the March 11, 2011 Fukushima event. Yes. Yeah, and, uh, and, the, that, and that Foreshadowing is part of the technology of a right. false flag operation, that's so that right. it shows that there was a command and control element uh, yes. within the false flag operation that triggered the CDC to do this, and that coordinated the Stuxnet virus and the HARP, possibly the Tromso Norway HARP facility on March 11, 2011. This is just so that people get an idea of the integrated uh, genocidal, planetary genocidal aspects of this program. Okay, sorry. It's, um, it's never happened before. Um, I think we've been very lucky because of the internet to be able to get so much information and to connect it. And um, I don't think there are very many people putting this information out. Uh, so the audience should not be alarmed by it. It's meant to empower you, not to frighten you. Uh, we're doing it because it's happening to everyone and people need to know. So the, 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 um, 
the radiation syndicated pages that the Centers for Disease Control posted have titles like Radiation Emergencies, Radiation Emergencies um, Protecting Yourself and Your Family. Um, uh, hold on just a minute. Um, uh, radiation um, Ask questions, FAQs, about a radiation emergency. Um, radiation emergencies, informa information for clinicians. Radiation uh, Institute. And so it goes on with many, many, many of these documents that were suddenly posted <coughs> uh, two days before the disaster. Now, on March the 17th, which is the day before the radiation from the uh, first Fukushima explosion reached the west coast of the United States, public health officials in counties around California, and it must have been for every state, issued letters to doctors ordering them not to give iodine tablets or iodine supplements to their patients who were concerned about radiation poisoning. How could a doctor in his right mind prevent his patients from protecting themselves and their families from damage to their thyroid glands? That is a central messenger system in the body that controls and sends messenger molecules to all parts of the body to control functioning. And damage to the thyroid is one of the main causes of this huge epidemic of obesity that we have in the United States. And I just keep saying over and over again, they want to blame it on us, our lifestyles, our genetics, blah, blah, blah. But if it's an epidemic, it's not genetic. It's impossible. Um, so these uh, these these uh, public health officials in every county issued issue these letters. I have copies of two from different counties in California. On March the 17th and 18th, there were very very heavy chemtrails uh, being sprayed all over the San Francisco Bay Area, and it's been reported that uh, they were widely uh, uh, sprayed over the West Coast as well, even even parts of Arizona. On March the 18th, they were still spraying chemtrails. This was a Friday morning in San Francisco. And this huge vortex appeared in the sky over San Francisco. Uh, at 11 a.m., there was suddenly lightning and thunder and the, the electricity flickered and at 11.05 a.m., uh, suddenly tornado alerts came out on the television and a two-week downpour started. We should not have been having two weeks of rain at this time of year. Um, we have no rain from uh, April or May until November because we have a, a, a Mediterranean climate in, in California. But uh, that downpour started. We get 14 inches of rain on average a year in, San Fr in uh, California. We were getting an inch an hour for hour after hour on many days. It caused flooding of 19 counties in California. The governor announced a state emergency because of all the flooding, but he never mentioned all the radiation. And... This is more weather engineering to, to carry out a more efficient nuclear war, and there's no more efficient nuclear war than that delivered by bombs or radiation that are, are exploded in rain clouds, and then that's, that's rained out. And so we got a huge dose on the West Coast, and that's why the car floor mats and the building where that volunteer radiation monitoring station is, uh, have, has been reporting such high levels, and they're increasing every day. 
Now, uh, now in terms, I, I really want to like go in uh, in my capacity.